Hello Volkswagen and Audi owners and fans and whoever is watching us on uh, YouTube. Welcome back to another episode. We have a sort of regular and special car here today. Um, the own name Jeff, the owner Jeff um, contact us. He have a S4 B6 model and um, it is fully standard and everything but this one is a bit special. This is probably the cleanest S4 what I've ever seen ever. Yeah, um, it is uh, imported from Japan basically, and it's also the lowest miles I've seen. It's only 54k on the clock, I think. So um, the reason why he dropped the car to us, it's not running properly, and uh, we'll have to sort out a few issues. Um, basically, the engine lights on, and uh, we do have a rattle. It doesn't rattle on startup really badly. Let's try to start it up. So it doesn't rattle on starter, but if you're gonna have a look in the engine bay and you're gonna listen very carefully, you might hear that the engine is not running 100% and it will start misfiring as well after a while. But on the other hand, just look at the engine bay, everything's there, nothing is missing. Even the Audi logo is still there. That's a common fault that they just overheat and the glue just fell off and you're probably going to be missing that but it is absolutely mint rocker covers um, he requested to sort them out in um, in silver again so we're going to do those and before we're going to start any job i just want to plug it on the diagnostic and uh, see what's going on so as i mentioned it's like really low miles it's only 54,000 and uh, we have engine light on so yeah, just gonna switch it off so there's nothing get damaged and uh, let's look at the interior it's absolutely amazing the only thing which is a common problem it become a tent right in the back so uh, we're gonna take the headliner off and uh, we're just gonna retrim the whole headliner I'm just gonna do a small walk around the car you can see the standard wheels. It's my favorite color as well. It's uh, Delphine Gray, I think. How you can tell from the boot lid, it's not a UK or EU version, that's from Japan. So yeah, parking sensors. Um, we have uh, the sunroof with the solar, which is for the air conditioning, I think, to help run the aircon a bit. But yeah, it just looks stunning. Okay, so let's do the diagnostics first. Um, uh, I didn't plug it in when he dropped it. And uh, I'm just gonna show you how we check the timing with the VCDS. And uh, we're gonna make a decision what we're actually gonna do. The engine is coming out 100%, but uh, the variable timing is a bit more complicated thing and you've got more components what can go wrong. So I just wanna check everything before the job's carried out so we don't have to do the job twice because I just don't wanna be taking the engine out a few times. So yeah, let's check it. Okay, so now we are in the engine ECU. Gonna check the fault code. Oh yeah, we have a camshaft position sensor two, engine speed sensor, incorrect correlation yeah that that means uh we might have a problem on the sensor too that should be the passenger side probably the camshaft adjuster is worn out and it's just spinning we will show you the stage of the camshaft adjusters when the engine will be out then we have a yeah multiple misfire cylinder four and six we can actually keep the faults there we ain't gonna reason um for the timing, we have to start the engine up again and we will go measuring blocks and it should be 090, 091, 092, yes. So you can see the numbers moving now. 
that means both of them are operating so that means the solenoid is, is opening and closing that's fine the only thing is these numbers should be a bit lower on, on idle so looks like it's all working we're gonna have to have a look what's going on so yeah from from this point I can probably tell it is working but we definitely have a problem on bank one so uh, we'll have a deeper look why this is on we have to strip it all out also what he mentioned the uh, parking sensors are not working let me try it reverse hmm. oh yeah one long beep yeah, that means one of the sensors is out uh, let's have a look at that and now from this we should be able to tell which sensor is faulty so it's really mid right so that will be the offside in the closer to the center so we have to order a sensor and get it painted in the paint coat okay so that's the situation with the car uh, with under diagnostic check everything what needs to be checked before you're gonna come in uh, probably we're gonna start with the headliner because usually that will take a bit longer but yeah it will be fun it will be fun so yeah let's take it in and let's start the stripping process so yeah, you can probably see now that's all coming off so yeah um it should be a bit easier than on the b5 um, so we have to take some bits and bobs of and it's mostly on clips so yeah let's start the job so yeah the trim is basically just holding on these metal clips so just don't be afraid to pull a bit more and they just come out nicely and then you're just gonna clip them back on so yeah, this is a tricky one over here. There is a hidden bolt right inside there. Now the headliner looks like once it's out of the car, you can see the original stickers from the factory. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna drop it to our friend down the road. He will retrim the whole headliner for us and uh, we've got to put it back on once it's done. This is how it looks from inside while it's all removed. Uh, the whole loom is basically still in the car it was just uh, clipped onto the headliner so um, as soon as you're gonna take it off it will come out nicely the the back trim you can see the clips so just needs to be pulled out gently so yeah let's move on to the engine now okay so i put the car on the ramp i've done a small visual inspection on the vacuum um, everything looks all right there's nothing broken or there's nothing missing there so that should be all right anyways before i'm gonna take the engine out i want to check uh, all the compression so i'm gonna remove the coal packs and spark plugs and we're gonna turn the engine and see what numbers we're gonna get and after that i just have to remove everything from the top uh, disconnect the loom and we're just gonna drop the engine with the subframe and the box on the floor so yeah typical procedure so yeah let's do it okay so we check all eight cylinders and uh, this is the result uh, the passenger side is a bit higher than the driver side but shouldn't be an issue really so we don't have to do nothing entirely to the engine so yeah, just gonna take it out now and uh, we're gonna check the timing chains from the back and see what's going on you can see the rocker covers are a bit nasty so we're gonna drop them clean them and respray them as well so they'll look a bit more fresh than the old ones.
so yeah, the V8 is outside the car now. Um, we're gonna start stripping uh, the exhaust, take the whole loom off, and um, the gearbox needs to come off the engine. We did find a few more issues as usual, more oil leaks. Uh, the CV boots are uh, gone as well. So uh, the only way how we're gonna find out what we're actually gonna do on the timing chains is gonna split it all and take all the covers off. So yeah, let's do it. And uh, hopefully we're gonna know the result today. Okay, okay, so we took all the covers off now. Um, I can't really see nothing damaged inside. All the guides are there, everything is cool. Even this one is not broken, which is a bit of odd because the engine has uh, fault codes for the timing and uh, it was misfiring and stuff. So I didn't even see the problem from the front where the plates are now. That was all lined up as well. So I'm guessing the camshaft adjusters will be fine. Um, anyways, we're gonna open them up and uh, have a look if uh, the plate's not damaged or worn out. A few problems here and there. Uh, let's strip it all down and hopefully we will find a solution. So yeah, let's continue stripping it. So, situation update, we took uh, both of the camshaft adjusters apart, as you can see, this one here is sort of alright, there is a small bit which is worn out, right here, but the other one is gone, you can see from the top, yeah, it become oval, so that means this side over here is not holding the pin properly and it's uh, much easier to you know jump out because the only thing what's holding in place is this pin which is inside here and if it's gonna come out it allows camshaft to adjust as soon as it's worn out as you can see over there you need much lower oil pressure to push the pin out and uh, this camshaft will open sooner than the other one then you're gonna have a, a timing correlation fault so yeah, I have to contact the owner now, uh, tell him the bad news and we're gonna see what we're gonna do with him. So yeah, spoke with the owner now and um, he decided to go for two new camshaft adjusters. So here they are from TPS. There's one and there's two. They also advise us to take the solenoids out, both sides and replace new gaskets and also there are two washers which are sitting behind there they need to be replaced as well so yeah as you can see we've got the rs4 guides one two three i need the uh, new doubles on this because it's a bit loose so we've got those as well somewhere over here yeah so they will be replaced right over there so yeah, we can continue with the job, we've got everything what we need, uh, probably we're going to start with the front, uh, we still have to sort out uh, the water pump which is leaking from over there, 
and there's the leak as well over here. So we're gonna put new gaskets on both sides. Um, the drive belt needs replacing as well, and then we're gonna do the middle thingy over here, which uh, needs cleaning first. And we will put new oil valves there, so everything sorted at once. So yeah, let's do it. So yeah, I cleaned the engine pretty much, uh, so we've got a new drive belt ready. We've got those two new gaskets for the water pump, which I cleaned up. There's a new gasket here already. So yeah, we can put this back on now and uh, we're going to continue in the middle of the engine. Okay, so the bear engine is pretty much done. Put all the water pipes back in and the EGRs and stuff. Um, I have to sort out one more issue, and that was the vacuum pipes. So they were replaced for these rubber ones because the old one just cracked. So uh, that's all sorted. Clean from the front. And uh, yeah, we're gonna put the gearbox back on now and uh, we're gonna push it in the car.
that's the mechanical stuff done now and uh, I still stay the car for tracking because we've done the suspension arms and uh, traffic lens and everything so it definitely needs tracking uh, the last thing uh, what we need doing is the headliner what, we, what we've done as a first job and uh, there's one more issue with the rear parking sensor so that will be replaced job done uh, Jeff can collect the car probably a couple of days now so yeah let's finish it off